All right, happy Friday. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. Hope all of you are gearing up to have a fantastic weekend. We have an absolutely loaded show coming your way. The Eagles injury report, long with a lot of notable players on it. There was an injury scare at practice today. We also have some training camp observations, position battles, Nolan Smith getting more first team reps, and Jalen Hurts finally threw his first interception of training camp. To who? We'll tell you here in just a little while. First, though, I want your feedback because I love going live here on Eagles now. Some of our live shows have been incredible with Super Chat Battles and, of course, giving you some of the best Eagles coverage right here on YouTube. But wanna, I want to gauge where the audience is at here. So what day and time should we do our live Eagles Now shows coming up this football season. Let me know. Give me Eastern, Pacific, where you're watching from. We just appreciate your feedback down below in the comment section. We start with the Patrick Johnson injury. And we kind of went on a wild ride here for a few moments this morning from the NovaCare Complex, given the reports that we were getting from Jeff McClain of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Patrick Johnson, the outside linebacker, was carted off at practice today. And Jeff McClain had tweeted this out, that he suffered a knee injury at practice, potentially season-ending, but will have to undergo testing for a final diagnosis. Brandon Lee Gowton, Bleeding Green Nation with this, that he was holding his knee slash leg, punched the ground in frustration, had to be helped onto the cart that took him off the field. And then a little while later, I'm putting this show together thinking that Patrick Johnson might be out for the year. This is kind of a violation from a guy who breaks a lot of stories in McLean. He said, correction, Patrick Johnson's injury is not considered serious, still waiting on further testing. Now, when we get that information of what that further testing shows with the MRI and the X-ray that's obviously inevitable at this point, we'll of course let you know. Either way, you hate to see this happen from McLean when he has to retract something like this. You hate to see it with the player because Johnson, up to this point, we talked about him in further detail on yesterday's show, had been having a really good camp at a position of question, bolstering the depth at that linebacking unit. He's played in 33 games the last two years, only two starts. They came two years ago, former seventh-round pick in 2021 out of Tulane. Hopefully he's okay because he's a pretty good special teams player for this Eagles special teams unit. More injury news to get to. Hassan Reddick update here. He hasn't practiced up to this point with that groin injury. Did partake lightly in some team drills. Basically was a limited participant. Yesterday we passed along the information of N'Kobe Dean being on the sideline with his helmet after going into the medical tent. It is an ankle injury, not believed to be serious, but did sit out of practice for a second consecutive day. Seems as though it's going to be a day-to-day -day injury for Dean, who hasn't really popped up to this point in training camp so far. And linebacker, a huge question mark for this Eagles defense going into 2023. I still think Howie Roseman is going to scour the free agency market for a veteran who's still available or look at making a trade a la a C.J. Gardner-Johnson type of move right before the regular season. He just wants to scout and gauge what these young linebackers can do with Dean Morrow and Nolan Smith, who we're about to talk about here. James Bradbury also banged up. For him, it is a groin injury. So some soft tissue injuries happening for the Eagles in camp so far, it's kind of to be expected, but the last two years, they've been one of the most healthy teams in football. Hopefully that continues because injury attrition, as we saw at points in the Andy Reid era, especially in the Doug Peterson era, which is why they really had to get it together in December because they were so banged up playing catch-up, can really curtail any hopes that you have of winning a Super Bowl. Bradbury, one of the highest-rated cornerbacks last year, according to Pro Football Focus, is also day-to-day. -day. Now, this is why you subscribe to the show, because when breaking Eagles news happens, when there's an injury out there, if you want us to bring the heat with some training camp observations, we always have you covered. It's all things birds, all the time, E-A-G-L-E-S. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and on the road to victory. Hit that subscribe button right now. Jalen Hurts today. He had been flawless up until Friday's practice. 
not on Friday. He wasn't bad by any means, but made a couple of mistakes. Throwing his first interception of training camp up to this point, it was a situational team setting. He did not see Darius Slay underneath as Slay dropped back into coverage. Jalen Hurts looked to throw a pass intended for Dallas Goddard and Slay the veteran making a veteran savvy play. But before that, Hurts almost threw another interception. He was almost picked off by Reed Blankenship. Blankenship tipped it up into the air. Blankenship, by the way, starting every day at safety. Instead, after the tip, it was A.J. Brown who was able to reel it in, and Nick Sirianni, who loves Jalen Hurts. He's complimented him so much as a player and the work ethic that he puts in. He got after Hurts. Given the situational awareness and the situational mistake here, Elliot Shore Parks with a good breakdown here on Twitter. Third and five, no timeouts. This was a different scenario, by the way, than the interception. 25 seconds left. So practicing these scenarios, obviously, Pretty important because it does dictate what you do in practice, what happens in the games, right? So you have to get ready for these types of scenarios so that you're ready for them in a game atmosphere. Hertz kept it. He was short of the first down marker. Sirianni with a hard coaching moment for his quarterback wasn't happy with the decision that Jalen Hurts made. And then in classic Jalen Hurts fashion, he knew he made a mistake. He's a coach's son. His coach... Uh, his son, uh, his father, by the way, Coach Brian Johnson, when he was in high school, Hurts did push-ups after the play to penalize himself. More training camp notes here before we go in further detail on Nolan Smith. Tyler Steen getting backup left tackle reps, but also right guard reps at Alabama and at Vanderbilt prior to him transferring. He was solely a left tackle. Hasn't played a lot of guard. The Eagles are trying to develop him into that role. But anytime an offensive lineman can play multiple positions, it helps the greater good of that offensive line and, of course, helps your chances of making the roster. Tyler Steen is not on the roster bubble, but the point here being when you can play multiple positions, like I can host multiple shows here at Chat Sports, you're more valuable for your employer. Cam Jurgens, Jason Kelsey, and Lane Johnson were given some snaps off. So with Jason Kelsey having a lesser workload today, it was Cam Jurgens who was drafted to be Kelsey's center replacement filling in. So if an injury were to happen to Kelsey, it would be Cam Jurgens, I would think, next in line at that center spot, and then at right guard, maybe a Tyler Steen, maybe a Dennis Kelly, or somebody else. Joseph Nagata, the Clemson legend, and my boy Chipper here, new producer at Chat Sports, he's been crushing it. He went to Clemson, and he even said he was a baller at Clemson, and he is climbing his way up the Eagles' wide receiving depth chart. He's a big-bodied wide receiver who can climb the ladder and go get it. There aren't a lot of those prototypes at wide receiver on this Eagles roster. Nagata is one of them, and physically, he's been able to stand out. He caught a touchdown from Marcus Mariota, and right now, after good days from Quez Watkins, Olamide, Zacchaeus, because that's the last note we want to get here, you think about this Eagles wide receiver depth chart right now. They are led, of course, by A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. After that, though, kind of a toss-up between Zacchaeus and Quez Watkins. This is how I envision things going into camp. I think that Quez has been able to unseat Zacchaeus as wide receiver three, so you can flip-flop those two if you want. It's still an ongoing training camp battle, and we'll see what happens throughout training camp. After that, though, because a guy like Devin Allen has been out, Deion Kane has been injured, wide receiver five is up for grabs. And I would say as of this moment, Joseph Nagata, if the Eagles decide to have five receivers on that 53-man roster, could be the guy to make this team. Britton Covey also has to be factored into the mix as well at wide receiver because he figures to be one of this team's specialists as a returner. Coming up next here on the show, once again in training camp, Nolan Smith and pressing, and once again getting some first team reps. Doing something that he did at Georgia, but how much of this did he do at Georgia? Stay tuned for that, but first, the Eagles Kelly Green jerseys are here, and you can get yours right now by heading to chatsports.com slash Kelly Green. The Eagles are selling these at all of their pro shops. Lincoln Financial Field, the one in Lancaster, and then there's one in 
New Jersey as well, right across the bridge. But if you can't get to one of those pro shops, your only option, have somebody send it to you, but even easier, just use that link down below, chatsports.com slash Kelly Green. So many people who watch the program, we've been able to chart this, have used our link to get their Kelly Green jerseys. I did the same. My Jason Kelsey jersey is coming. Might not be for a little while because they are in such popular demand. But either way, multiple sizes still available, multiple players still available, men's, women's, kids, chatsports.com slash Kelly Green. The Eagles starting linebackers today on that first team defense with the Kobe Dean out, Nolan Smith for the second consecutive day playing off-ball linebacker, and then Christian Ellis playing off-ball linebacker as well. You have to think about it this way, right? Sean Desai going to run a 3-4-4-3 three, four, four, three hybrid, right? But even though there might be three down defensive linemen, there's going to be outside linebackers who are pass rushers like Hassan Reddick. So kind of two linebacker sets at some times. So Nolan Smith, Christian Ellis, those two linebackers today. Now I saw some of you in the comment section saying, Nolan Smith did this at Georgia last year. It shouldn't come as much of a surprise. It's a little bit of a surprise because the Eagles drafted him to be a Hassan Reddick player not drop back in coverage. He does have experience doing that at Georgia, which is why the Eagles want to see what he's able to do. Now, last year with the Bulldogs, only played in eight games, 188 total defensive snaps, 102 pass rush snaps. He was outside tackle 172 times. So while Nolan Smith did play a little bit of off-ball linebacker, only 14 snaps last year. Two years ago, he also played some off-ball linebacker, but the discrepancy was about the same. He's primarily used as an edge rusher, as that outside linebacker, a Von Miller, Hassan Reddick type. But this is an interesting development, and I said this yesterday. If he's able to play with more versatility and thrive in that off-ball linebacker role, it calms down some of the questions we might have at that linebacker spot, although I still think you're better suited going after a Patrick Queen if he's available. Let's round out today's show with this. A good camp for Devontae Smith. Heading into today's practice, 11 catches on 14 targets, one touchdown in five practices total. This guy loves to get in the lab. He loves to grind. He loves to hustle. He loves the routine and the process of perfecting his footwork, perfecting his routes. He is just an ultimate professional, and we saw this at Alabama when everybody raved about his work ethic. We're seeing it here in Philadelphia, and that's what's allowed him to break records his first two years, the most receiving yards year one as a rookie, the most catches in franchise history last year, and I think going into his junior season year three, he's in store for yet another big campaign. So the Eagles' leading receiver this year will be who? I actually think it's going to be pretty close here. A.J. Brown, type 11, his jersey number, or Devontae Smith, type 6. It was A.J. last year, but Devontae Smith, he could have a monster year here. The thing is, best wide receiver duo in the NFL, in my opinion, because they're so well-rounded and versatile, but they're also both having really good training camps up to this point as well. Feel free to interact with me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be checking my DMs all throughout the weekend. If you want to slide in there, say what's up. Let's talk some Eagles football. And another reminder... We want your feedback. What day and time should we do our live shows this football season? Let us know down in the comments section. We appreciate you for watching today's show, and don't forget to lock us in and subscribe.